How's it going everyone? Got quite a bit to talk about in this video. A brand new free-to-play multiplayer medieval warfare game has been announced for consoles and PC. The PC open beta will be kicking off soon, but a full release should be happening sometime thereafter on consoles. And then a new PlayStation 5 firmware update did drop yesterday, and there's actually a bit of a change that was pointed out by a bunch of people uh, in regards to trophies. We'll talk about that. The Legend of Heroes Trails from Zero, a JRPG I'm very excited for very excited about the fact it's coming here over to the west but unfortunately on playstation 4 it will be lacking some of the improvements that will be coming to the nintendo switch and pc versions of the game we'll talk that at the end of this video but first of all toy logic have announced a free-to-play multiplayer medieval warfare game in warlander for consoles and pc now specifically they note that it'll be coming open beta on pc via steam starting september the 12th and followed by that It'll be seeing a release on Generation 9 consoles at a later date. I would imagine that would include uh, PlayStation and whatnot. The game notes up to 100 players will be able to join up and battle it out as a part of two or five armies in skirmishes and castle sieges with the goal of breaking into the opponent's stronghold and destroying its core. Playing either as a warrior, cleric, or mage with their own unique set of skills, players will have the option to build decks of finely customized characters for battles ahead. This includes skill and ability customizations as well as visual ones to help characters stand out in the heat of battle. There will be two game modes available at launch. First, a two-team mode with up to 40 players and a five-team mode up to 100 players uh, in terms of how many players per match. Warlander is an action-packed third-person online multiplayer game with a unique style that matches a medieval-inspired setting, fantastical items and abilities, and even powerful robots featuring intense competitive skirmishes and epic castle sieges. Warfare with up to 100 players, you must use the almighty power of godlike warriors, clerics, and mages, as well as siege weapons and cataclysmic spells to control the battlefield. To be victorious, you must work as a team, define your keep, and tactically break into the enemy's stronghold to destroy their core. There's going to be a variety of different uh, customization options as well. Deeply tailored class-based characters, each with their own loadout of rarity based on customizable equipment, skills, and talents, as emotes and dance moves. How different are each of the classes? You can create a character of any class at any time in the character tab. Once you create a character, you must add it to one of your decks, and when you start a match, you will choose the deck of characters that you'd like to play during said match. Characters without titles can be deployed at any time during a match, while characters with titles can only be used when a specific in-game Valor has been hit. Valor is earned by defeating enemies, building devices and completing objectives during a match. Press warp at any time to deploy a new character or to warp to any controlling towers. It's a free-to-play game that's going to be available through Steam and Generation 9 consoles to follow thereafter. There are system requirements out right now if you do want to play it on PC. It'll be playable with a controller and mouse and keyboard, of course. So that is another free-to-play title. I would imagine it would see a release sometime in 2023, given that open beta will be kicking off on September the 12th, but I will keep you guys posted on that as far as when exactly you can expect that. But again, the Warlander uh, beta is going to be available for everyone on Steam, so you can download it right on there. All right, moving on from that, the newest PlayStation 5 firmware update has dropped bringing forth a plethora of changes, most notably 1440p display support, 3D audio settings, uh, some social updates are there as well. A lot of the changes that I would just say are quality of life improvements. However, YouTuber Mystic also found that there is a new change in regards to PlayStation trophies. I find this change kind of interesting. Um, so if you guys don't know, obviously you guys know, I'm sure you've looked through trophy lists at least once in your life, even if you don't care about trophies. Trophies are achievements that are listed and you do specific things. A lot of the times they are progressed through certain stages of a game story campaign. Do XYZ side mission, reach XYZ level, whatever the case may be. But there are also usually secret trophies that are available. A lot of the times this is tailored towards those story driven achievements and trophies because they don't want to give out spoilers to the players, but sometimes you'll just have secret trophies out there because they want to, uh, the developers for whatever reason wanted to keep it a secret and it's hidden and whatnot. Well, now, if you hit the options button in the tr main trophy menu on the PlayStation 5 hub page, you can access a new toggle, and this toggle allows you to reveal all trophies in any given list, including the hidden trophies. Not like a huge update, but I find that rather interesting. I mean, like, I find the reasoning for hidden trophies to be... I, I can see why they're doing it, and um, I can understand why developers would keep things hidden, especially in the case of story campaigns, but to have a feature like this seems like a no-brainer, given that anybody can go on their phone, can go on their computer, and look up a trophy list for a game well before a game even comes out, and most likely you're gonna find that trophy list be available uh, 
pretty widespread online. I can definitely understand keeping certain trophies hidden, again, for the sense of uh, some of those trophies being story-specific. Like, if you actually had... Uh, let's say the Horizon Forbidden West trophies that were story related just available to you right out the gate and you just went through it. Oh boy, you're just spoiling a lot of the elements of the game to yourself. And yeah, good on them for keeping those hidden. Um, so I can understand from that standpoint why they would be hidden. But uh, in the case of having a toggle, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So a nice addition there. Again, a very minor one, but nice to see nonetheless. Lastly... Legend of Heroes, obviously a franchise that I talk up very highly on this channel. I'm sure a lot of you guys have played Trails of Cold Steel based on the fact that I will not shut up about it. Game that I really enjoy and I'm very excited about the fact that Legend of Heroes is becoming more and more accessible over here in the West. There's a variety of ways you can play it. Emulation, Trails in the Sky is available on PC, it's available on uh, PSP. But Trails from Zero has been one of the harder ones to actually play. There's translations and whatnot, but it's getting a full release come later this month, and it'll be available on PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Unfortunately, with the PlayStation 4 version of the release, for whatever reason, um, it is not getting the updates that the Nintendo Switch and PC players are going to be able to experience. That'll be uh, UI scaling, a custom text log, increased frame rate, mitigated distance pop-in, updated sprites, and cleaned up textures. These are updates done by Durante, uh, who has fixed up a lot of PC versions of games, Ease 8 being a prime example of that. Uh, Gamatu received an official message from NIS America noting the PlayStation 4 version of The Legend of Heroes Trails from uh, Zero will be consistent with the original Japanese release for this title. This will be the original experience by Falcom that does not include any additional work provided by other developers. The additional content coming to the Nintendo Switch and PC ports have been explained in detail by Peter Durante in uh, various blog posts that were released in June and August respectively. Again, I don't think this is going to be a game-breaking experience if you're going to be playing on PlayStation 4. Far from it, but this is a game that they're charging a premium for. I don't know if this is a case of Sony having an issue with it, if they needed to get something through to Sony, if it was easier to get the PC refinements available on Nintendo Switch, whatever it is. That is a little bit of a bummer, but hopefully the game... I mean, at the end of the day, it's not like the game is, was going to ever be blow away from a visual standpoint. I believe a Trails from Zero initially released on the PSP, so, you know, you have to keep your expectations in line uh, as far as what to expect um, from a performance and visual standpoint, just because it's not a game that is looking to be a technical juggernaut. And again, it initially came out back in 2010 on the PSP. So um, you're getting into this game for the narrative. You're getting into this game for the gameplay. And I think those elements are still going to be pretty strong, but it would have been nice to get a bit of an uplift that the Switch and PC versions are getting. But nonetheless, Toy Logic has announced a brand new free-to-play multiplayer medieval warfare title in Warlander, a brand new PlayStation 5 firmware update dropped yesterday. A ton of new updates to that trophy update that went a bit under the radar. That definitely wasn't outlined in the blog post. Um, pretty interesting. I don't think it's going to be, you know, a game changer by any stretch of the imagination, but a nice addition as well. And Trails from Zero, unfortunately, on PS4 will lack some of the improvements that the Switch and PC versions will be supporting. That's going to do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.